how's it going? Here I have a Subaru five-speed manual transmission. The interesting about this model is that it is fitted with a dual range system. That's this system here. The input shaft is not one continuous shaft. It's a normal Subaru five-speed transmission. It's got a blown gear on it. I think that might be second gear, not sure. But you know, it's one solid shaft. <clears throat> Anyhow, Right here, the input shaft is not directly connected to its main section here where all the gears are meshing. Um, the difference is that this synchro here is able to either activate a profile, it moves. I'm not going to move it because that thing tends to fall apart when everything's not under tension. Everything's still kind of, doesn't look loose, but it's not all properly bolted down. We already had an issue with that synchro falling apart. Synchros are these devices. What they do is they lock gears of the shaft. Here, the, sh the gear is free to rotate. Or actually, here it's locked in this position. And if I move here, okay, for example, this gear, This gear here is not locked to the shaft. See, I'm holding the shaft down and the gear is freely rotating. So if I were to push one of the levers down, it will lock it down so that the gear is locked to the shaft. In a manual transmission, the gears are constantly in mesh. So yeah, here's the whole dual range mechanism. This works by either linking this piece of the input shaft directly to this piece and giving you a direct connection or by going by way of this here this extra piece of gearing here will allow you to go around and through it and it'll give you a different gearing profile I'm not sure exactly what different profile i believe it may be an off-road thing so that your gears are a bit lower if you will kind of for more torque i don't know you can let everyone know in the comments how exactly that works anyways here's the unit this is the front differential right here it's driven by this shaft out here we have a center differential which takes the power from here from the uh, this is the driven shaft you know input shaft here power goes through the input shaft into the driven shaft out to the center diff and the severed diff returns some of the power here and the rest it sends through to the drive shaft to the rear of the car the axles plug right in here here is a pinion gear, and I believe it's called the hypoid gear that drives this system. So here we have the synchros, the various gearing, um, the input shaft. This is the device to switch if we're going to take this path or direct gearing. This is the whole dual range thing. This transmission was in an 06 WRX that I bought used. The um, previous owner of the car had swapped in an EJ20X engine. That's a Japanese market engine. It's not available in the US. The EJ20X comes from the Japanese market Legacy GT. And apparently he also decided to pick up a um, some kind of Japanese market five-speed transmission with the whole dual range feature. I don't believe dual range was available in the US. And this is definitely not a stock transmission on the 06 WRX. So it'll be interesting to find out which car it comes from. It's an interesting device, but... Uh, probably does weaken the system in that now um you don't have a solid shaft you have more stuff that can break here as it is the five speed manual transmissions on the subarus not the strongest engines if you're going to build the engine for more power i'm sorry not the strongest transmissions one advantage of this transmission is this is like solid steel here as opposed to being cast into the housing of the aluminum it's replaceable if your throw out bearing fails it can ruin this input area right here this kind of sleeve around the input shaft and that's one advantage of this transmission is that it's very unlikely to be damaged as it's steel and if it were it's replaceable this little unit here kind of comes out um here's where your throw out bearing mounts um when assembling this transmission kind of the overview is the first thing you're going to do is pop in the center differential then you're going to put in the driven shaft this one can be a little bit tricky to put in because there are pins here that have to align the bearings you have to have them correctly aligned and then you can try to push the bearing back and forth 
I'm not gonna move it too much now because it's solidly in there. But if it's solidly in, it won't wobble and the bearing will look firmly seated in the housing. Same with this one up here. <clears throat> Once the bearing is firmly seated in the housing, what you can do is use marking grease, which I did there with a bit of white lithium grease from AutoZone to mark directly above where the hole is for the, for the pin that locks the bearings. You need to lock the bearings or things aren't gonna mesh up properly. We're having a problem where the center diff, I'm sorry, the front diff was extremely grindy, not loud, and just generally, you could tell something was wrong. There is supposed to be some play in there. It's kind of hard to demonstrate because it's not bolted up. Right now, holding this solid, it seems to mesh perfectly now, but there's some play in there called lash. And that is normal. You can adjust the lash by adjusting um, these things right here these rings here adjust how much this bearing presses down on the center diff that's one lash adjustment another one is that you can adjust is by changing the number of spaces here I'm gonna just leave it how it is it was working before I mess with it and I wanted to be working after I mess with it without going through too much trouble you can also use grease here marking grease to check the tooth contact pattern you'll find all that in the like in the factory service manual for these transmissions they'll tell you what the marking pattern is you can get like a little dial indicator mounted up here and you can measure the lash not going to do that but you can check that out in other videos if you want to adjust the lash on your front differential you can hear the lash right there that's normal the reason there is lash which is free space between the gears is to allow room for lubrication and i believe it won't wear as hard if there's a little bit of space in there um, but the machines are designed with the intention of having lash. This is where the speedometer gear meshes up right here. This is the speedometer gear. It goes to a sensor. This sensor seems to be fully compatible on this tool range with whatever USDM parts you might have on your car, your wiring, your ECU, etc. doesn't seem to be an issue. This little pin, they sawed off the wiring here. This is the one that measures the position of the dual range mechanism, this fork here. It, uh, it has a little, little pin right there that's measuring what the dual range position is i believe these are off the forester if i'm correct i think it's an off-road intention myself i'm going to set it to just lock straight to here not go around i think that'll give me the most strength and i'm gonna put it in my car see how it runs um but yeah this is a mechanism you need to be careful with it got set into neutral and i went as far as rip apart the entire transmission because i didn't know about this mechanism by the time i found it I had foolishly triggered it forward without this part in. You don't want to mess with it while the transmission is open. And this synchro is kind of loosely built, fell apart, had to look up videos and everything on how to reassemble the synchro, how to learn how to reassemble the pin. A lot of trouble. So um, don't move this. Keep it in, I guess, a neutral position while the transmission is open. You can put a screwdriver in here if you wanted to move it. Um, and that's all. Oh, last thing I'm going to show is actually how reverse works since we're here. This is reverse. These are the straight cut gears. The reason you hear that kind of weird whining noise, see these are not straight cut. They're kind of angled. I guess they're like, I don't know what the name is. They're not a bevel gear. They're something else. Like some other technical name. These are straight cut gears. The reason you hear a whining noise when you're in reverse is because these gears are straight cut, so they're more noisy. These gears here, they're not actually meshing. They're going via this third gear down there. I don't know if you can catch it back there in the corner. This one. And when I actually pull in the reverse, these gears, you know, they want to mesh up. Let's see if we can. There we go. We're in reverse now. It, it, it goes three gears because gears, when they're meshing, spin in opposite directions. So the engine's actually turning in reverse. As you drive around, the engine is in reverse. And when um, it goes through the transmission, the direction is reversed to be forward. So actually all the other gears are reversed. The reason behind that is you want to minimize the number of gears. You want to minimize the losses. That's another thing that's bad about this dual range system. It's weaker and it has more losses because it's got another two gears here that are constantly dragging. I don't know how significant that is, but I do know that front differentials and all wheel drive system does put significantly more load on the engine and you're going to lose power. And that's why you have crank horsepower and you have wheel horsepower. And you might ask, how did my switch? I was installing these blast plates, which are supposed to allow for your brace together better. These steel plates are supposed to add more rigidity, and they're supposed to hold the case a lot tighter together and keep it from twisting under high torque conditions. 
and keep the gears in mesh and keep them less likely to have this happen to them. And um, basically I took the transmission off to do that to install the blast plates and something got knocked loose or banged on here and caused this to flip into a neutral position which is where I am now and that's how I got here of having to take the whole thing apart and become an expert on the Subaru 5-speed dual range manual transmission so I could be here making the video so yeah that's how the reverse mechanism works there's also a reverse lockout a bunch of other cool stuff that's on the um, center diff housing you can see it out there there's the center diff in that house some more gearing the output shaft uh, final output is kind of up there by that by the uh, where the glove is and then you can see um, some various sensors on there I believe is a reverse sensor that tells the car when you're in reverse and there's one for um, neutral sensor or something like that but the speedometer itself is the one I uh, showed here and these shims here kind of help tighten it down to get the exact Flash. so you can add or remove shims to get fatter ones that's something you can do you can order them in different sizes again i'm not going to go into that far there's a big thrust washer looks like this is it right here that thrust collar goes in there it also kind of um, determines the axial position of these the bearings don't appear to carry much axial load since these shafts are free to move back and forth along them they probably carry mainly i think they just support the shafts so that'll be more of a radial load but again, it shouldn't be that much. They're kind of just to keep everything centered. But yeah, you just need to make sure they're aligned. Um, these bearings here, you want to make sure you don't uh, switch the cones. Every bearing wears to the cone or the ring it, it guides in. And I think that's all the information I have for you so far on this one. Oh yeah, seal it up with some silicone. All right, y'all have a good one.